<laughs> Can Spider-Man come out to play? <laughs> Never face me, have you, Spider-Man? It's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. Huge shout out to Mike Wizard 24 and DeFreak98715 for suggesting a bee costume for the spooky mama month of Cyflick. But man, has it been a while since we've gathered around the hive to talk some movie news and we got a lot to catch up on. So some of the big things we're gonna be discussing here today, guys, talking about the latest teaser trailer for the Batman that gives us a listen at the Robert Pattinson Batman voice. Of course, talking about some Spider-Man No Way Home as we have some new images and details that landed online about the second trailer even catching up on some trailers that have come out the past couple of days like the home alone reboot trailer that along with so much more so i'm gonna need you guys to pull out your b singers real quick whip it out for me that's long and pointy great job buddy and use those stingers to hit that like button and comment down below what you think of all the news we're talking about today all right so starting off let's just catch up with some of the trailers that have come out in the past couple of days some of the ones that really stood out to me is one we got our first trailer for the movie black phone you guys might have heard me buzzing about this movie a couple of times here on the channel it is one of the latest blumhouse horror movies that is being directed by scott derrickson same man who brought a sinister and the first doctor strange and man this trailer really hyped me up for the movie i'm really digging the feel of it ethan hawk has this creepy man who's abducting kids also the mask he's got but just the setup alone of a kid who gets abducted is put in a room there's a disconnected black phone and when he answers it all the dead victims of this kidnapper is now giving the kid advice on how to escape and they give us little hints at that i also am seeing a lot of references to like pennywise and it i don't know if that's kind of like an influence on this movie but you can see like the raincoat and the black balloons using my method of rating trailers whether they're trash or treasure because you know one man's trash another man's treasure i'm gonna have to give this one a treasure jumping into the next trailer that was released along with a poster is our first look at the home alone reboot that'll be coming straight to disney plus november 12th titled home sweet home alone now i had actually been really looking forward to this because i've always been a fan of the home alone movies even some of the lesser sequels so i knew i was probably gonna enjoy whatever disney did but man i gotta be honest i felt no magic love not even had my wings afloating for this i do like how there's a little easter egg and callback letting you know that this is set in the same world as the original home alones but if you like Disney just wasn't able to capture that magic Christmassy type feeling with this film. Unfortunately, I am going to have to give it trash, but here's hoping the movie is better. Those are just a couple of the newer trailers that released. Let me know what you guys thought of those trailers and if you give them trash or treasure. All right, but moving on to something that I didn't get a chance to talk about here earlier in the week that I definitely want to discuss here is we got our first look at the new Willy Wonka played by Timothy Chalamet. They released some official photos of him most likely because they were about to start filming out in public so people were going to see him. And look, I know people are not crazy about another Willy Wonka movie movie especially since this movie's just named Wonka yeah no Willie on Chalamet this time but the only reason I have interest in this movie is because Paul King is directing and he's the man who made the first two Paddington movies and I really like those films so I think the costume is good and fits in line with Willy Wonka I'm just wondering if I'm gonna care at all about the origin story of Willy Wonka but I want to know from you guys do you like the costume are you even excited to see Willy Wonka and his origin moving on to something else that was a little controversial in the week is we got some casting for Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and man was it one that that had a lot of comic book fans kind of upset. It was being reported here by Variety and confirmed by James Gunn that Will Poulter will be playing Adam Warlock in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. If you remember at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 2, there was a post credit scene where the aliens that were covered in gold wanted to get revenge on the Guardians, so they were creating the perfect being known as him, aka Adam Warlock, who's a big central figure in the comics that even fought Thanos. He's also a character that plays the good and bad side depending on what storyline they'd like to go with and the main reason people were upset about this is because of will poulter's appearance because adam warlock is being described as the perfect being so with that people think he needs to be ultra sexy handsome and a lot of people are wanting people like zach efron who yeah i could see is a handsome man i'd sting him with my stinger but i think that's the thing i hate sometimes with comic book fans they want someone that looks identical to what they see in the pages and that's just impossible there's many instances where we've had people that don't look anything like their comic book counterpart gal gadot you remember when people were yelling about her beehives not being big enough to be Wonder Woman and now she's the definitive Wonder Woman in my opinion or Hugh Jackman was way too tall to play Wolverine he's gonna suck 
We all love Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. So just because Will Poulter is an ultra sexy handsome, I'll still say he's a handsome man. To me, I care way more about the acting ability and what that brings to the table. And Will Poulter is a damn good actor. I know most of you will know him from We Are The Millers, but the man has done more serious work outside of that, really has proven his chops. So I'm curious to see what he does in the MCU. And I think this casting choice is fine. Moving on from there, a little bit of update on the upcoming Exorcist reboot that is happening with Blumhouse. We have here an update from Blair Disgusting that I don't know if I'm very excited about or kind of hesitant on because they're saying here that David Gordon Green, the director of the latest Halloween movies with Michael Myers, is now set to direct all three of the new Exorcist films for Blumhouse. I think it's kind of wild that we already know three will be coming before we even get the first. But the reason I say I'm kind of hesitant on it is because I do really like what David Gordon Green did with Halloween 2018. It's one of the better Halloween sequels in my opinion. And then I saw Halloween Kills and I really liked it, review on my channel, but it was a slight dip in quality from the 2018 version, and I just don't know if having the same director keep doing the entire trilogy is always a good idea. I think something with like The Exorcist and how wild and creepy they are, it could really benefit from multiple directors, multiple points of view. So I am excited for David Gordon Green. I do have faith he'll turn out a better movie than most. I just don't want the man to get some tunnel vision and then we don't really get some out of the box stuff with The Exorcist. Let me know what you guys think about David Gordon Green being the one to direct all three of the the Exorcist movies. All right, but now talking about some of the big things here before we get to Spider-Man, let's talk about the Batman because they just released a little teaser promotional thing that I'm just going to play for you right now. It's not just a signal, it's a warning. That right there, my friends, was your first listen to Robert Panson's voice as the Batman. Let's hear it one more time. It's not just a signal, it's a warning. Oh, it's got me buzzing. That line is absolutely fantastic, and I can't believe it has not been said before in any Batman movie. It's not just a signal, it's a warning. That's exactly what this Batman should be. When that bat signal goes up in the sky, it should tell criminals that, oh, I need to go home and eat my porridge before Batman be showing up at my door hinge. Yeah. I'm not just a B, I'm a rapper too. And right before I uploaded this side flick, Matt Reeves showed us another photo of the Batman, Robert Pattinson looking over Gotham City. Oh, this is beautiful. And you know this is gonna be in the second trailer. It's really a good day for superhero fans. This Saturday cannot come soon enough with DC fandom because I really wanna see the second Batman trailer and what they have to offer. Be sure you guys stay tuned for the channel when I cover everything happening at DC fandom. It's gonna be a crazy day. Come in. What? Oh my god! Thank you, my love. <laughs> I was just in the middle of filming Cyclic. I'm gonna unbox this on the channel later today. But now getting on to some Spider-Man No Way Home talk, man, it feels like it's been forever since I talked about my favorite web slinger. But we had some new images and details released online by Entertainment Weekly today. And it said that these photos come directly from screenshots of the second Spider-Man trailer. So this is kind of our first look of that trailer. I'll be talking about when we're going to get it in a sec. But man, reacting to these photos first, I love it, man. This is so far my favorite Tom Holland Spider-Man suit because the boy just looks so fantastic in it. I can't tell you how happy I am that they got rid of the big black straps on the belt and it's just a much cleaner look feels like a classic spider-man before they start throwing in all these hundred different suits that all do a hundred different things but these look fantastic especially with spider-man there on the car in front of the sanctus from torum with dr strange there staring off at this boy like you just broke reality and set the spider people loose now along with these photos they also revealed a couple of details in the entertainment weekly article i'm just gonna read out the stuff that really stood out to me like one of the things here is that tom holland was saying that this movie is a lot more visceral and a lot more hand-to-hand -hand combat yes boy look i've loved Loved all the action scenes in the Spider-Man movie so far. My favorite one of Tom Holland's is every time he fights Mysterio and those illusions. We haven't really seen a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat with this Spider-Man. And the fact that they're saying there is going to be a lot of that here, I can only imagine what that's going to be like. Whether it's him fighting Willem Dafoe Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus and his claws, I'm happy there's more hand-to-hand -hand combat here. He also mentioned something very curious about the end of this trilogy and possibly what will happen in the next one up. He said, We were all treating No Way Home as the end of a franchise. Let's Let's say. I think if we're lucky enough to dive into these characters again, you'd be seeing a very different version. It would no longer be the Homecoming trilogy. We would give it some time and try to build something different and totally change the films. Whether that happens or not, I don't know, but we are definitely treating No Way Home like it was coming to an end and it felt like it. Ooh, 
Think of those words that he said. The end of a franchise. It's not just the end of his Spider-Man and his trilogy. It's the end of all the Spider-Man franchise. And that's the way they were treating No Way Home. As if they were never going to make another Spider-Man movie. You gotta bring Toby and Andrew in there. Come on, that's how you end the franchise. But we know Spider-Man will never stay dead for long and they will end up making another movie and most likely another trilogy. So in the fact that he says right here it will be tonally different and they'll really try to evolve the character has me really hyped because I have nothing against this version of Spider-Man but he's not the classic Spider-Man we know and some of the things that they've been hinting at with No Way Home feels like they're gonna go ahead and kind of reset Spider-Man to be the grounded, more relatable hero who's broke, struggling, probably in college not just one who relies on a rich billionaire to hand him everything so all that stuff is really exciting now as far as when we're gonna get the second trailer it is looking to be said that we're getting the second trailer by the end of October. The reports are coming out right now that it seems to be October 25th, and there's a lot of sources coming out saying this, particularly an employee who works at Regal Cinema. He went ahead and noticed that there was a mysterious trailer that had no name on it that popped up for the week of October 25th, the same week that Eternals would come out, and it's at the length of three minutes and 33 seconds. He said this is also what the Spider-Man trailer looked like in their system before it was finally noted as Spider-Man No Way Home. So Spider-Man fans, get hyped up. It looks like by the end of this month, we are going to get that. And here these images show our first look at that. But that is all the movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch me buzz around all this movie news. You guys are the absolute best. Got to figure out other cringy intros I could do with this B outfit. Can't let it go to waste. Also be looking out in the channel for this unboxing right here. Can't wait to see what's in it. You guys can follow me on Twitter, 3C Films, or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris the B. Stay jazzing, you spooky mama bros.